See, when you know God and when you understand God, you have a different perspective of your circumstances. For example, here Jesus is, they got two fish and three small loaves of bread and 5,000 hungry people. Now from a human perspective, that's the problem. Two fish, three small loaves of bread. But from a God perspective, that ain't no problem. So when Jesus said to them, hey, you feed them. The disciples said, what are we going to buy all this food? And what are we going to buy it with? Jesus said, you feed them. So I say this to say this to you. When your bank account is running a little low, when you got too much month left at the end of the money, oh, y'all don't hear me. Y'all don't hear me. That, that don't happen to everybody. But when you know who your God is, Whatever you need will be provided. All you got to do is what he said, hold on. Just trust, have faith. I'm a coming. And when you don't know what, when you don't know, think about the last time you was in trouble. And think about the last time the Lord delivered you. And lean on that faithfulness and say, yeah, he's coming again. He, he will not fail or forsake me. That was his promise. And he got to keep his word. You got to understand that it is not your strength, it's not your might, it's not your spark, it's not your bank account, your family, your circumstances, your pedigree that will see you through. It is God and God alone. And when you understand that, then you can be like David. Hey, my sins was against you and you alone. And when I get right with God, that will drive me to be right with people. Now, taking the census, it goes on just about everywhere. In the church, we want to count how many people in the congregation. Because the bigger the congregation, uh, the, the more powerful the church, the more dynamic the preacher is. So we always want to know what the number is. The retailers, they want to know which store selling the most good, who's making the most money. The banks want to know who got the most assets, who has the largest. The salesmen want to know who's making the biggest commission. David and the nation of Israel was focused on, first of all, based on their past success. They have been, as they say, they've been out there on the battlefield and they've been winning and they've been uh, really putting the hurt on people and now they're looking at being aggressive and going out and taking over some more nations. And, and so David's looking at how strong is my army so I can do this. He's forgetting about we are the nation that's supposed to be telling the world about God. We, the Christians, are supposed to be telling the world about God. Not focused on our jobs, on our houses, our bank accounts, our clothing. All these things that we focus on ain't what God got us here to do. David was having that same problem, so we could find ourselves focused on something else. He wanted to know what his military resources are. We are always looking to see what other type of resources that we got going on, as opposed to what is it that God wants from me in this life? What does he call me to do? Now, the thing is, what David needed to understand, and what you need to understand today, is the point number one, is that you can count on God's resources. In 2 Samuel 20, uh, 24, 3, Joab, now Joab wasn't a righteous man. Joab wasn't a religious man. Matter of fact, David told Joab to uh, kill Moriah, Uriah, he took care of him, no problem. He didn't question him, he didn't argue with him, no trouble. But when he see David want to take this census, Joab start thinking from a godly perspective, and he's saying, he saying, David, may the Lord your God multiply the troops a hundred times over, and may the eyes of my Lord the King see it. But why does my Lord the King want to do such a thing? You, you want to do something. Are you depending on God? Or are you depending on your resources? Are you doing it in your own strength? Or are you doing it in the power and the spirit of God? It's going to make a difference. Because if you're doing it on your own power, you don't need God. See, when, when God gives you a task, it's going to be a God-sized task. You ain't going to be able to do it without Him. When God gives you a talent, If we get personal now. Because see, when God gives you a talent, it's a, it should be used for
for the edification and the glory of the kingdom. But now we want to sit on our talent because it's my talent. I'm the guy who can sing. I'm the guy with the money. I, oh, y'all don't get me. Everything you have belongs to God. It's on loan to you. Yeah. <laughs> and if you don't give it back, if you don't use it for his glory, if you say for those who have much, I'm going to give them more. And, and for those who, who have little, I'm going to take that away from you. If you ain't using it for his glory, you don't need it. Give it back. Give it back. But Joab come out and he tell David, hey, don't do this because God has the resources you need for whatever's going on in your life. And that's what you need to know. For whatever problems, whatever struggle, it could be your health, it could be your finances, it could be your relationship with your wife, your relationship with your children. Whatever problem you have, God has the resources to fix it. All you got to do is lean on him, call on him, trust in him, count on God. If you count on God, you will not come up short. Now, the thing is this. When, when we, once we made up our mind, we're going to do something like David made his mind. Joab had the council come together. They talked and said, you know what, David, this ain't a good idea. So they all tell David, David, they ain't a good idea. You better, not, you better not do this. David wouldn't listen. And I agree the same way. When, you know, once we done made up, I'm going to get that stuff. He should have never done that to me. He done messed with the wrong person now. You know, that just me. Y'all y'all don't go after nobody like that, right? Uh, I'm going to get it. <laughs> You'll find yourself like that. And when somebody come up alongside you and try to straighten you out and try to give you a God that perspective, what you tell them? Talk to the hand! Because you don't want to hear it. Your mind is made up. I, you know what? You know, being a pastor, I hear that all. I don't want to talk to the pastor. I don't want to hear nothing from him. Hello? Okay. Fine with me. Because you're going to have to square it away with God. And you ain't going to be able to talk to him like that. Second point is this. When we sin, when we decide to do what we want to do, no matter what God thinks, all sin has consequences. You can count on the consequences of sin. So if you are trying to live the life with your feet on both sides of the fence, so that you can enjoy the fullness of both sides, you're going to have a problem because you're not going to get the fullness of either side. Yes, you cannot be a double-minded person. You either have to get on God's side and stay there or join the devil and be with him. You ain't going to be happy across the fence. You know, be a, if you're a hellion, be a hellion. But if you're a godly person, be a godly person and let your life reflect that. Because the consequences of sin is real. So when David... When David decided to go ahead and do the count, did he get the numbers? Then he's convicted. The Lord convicts us too. Holy Spirit is very good. He never misses opportunity to convict you of sin. The, first, the thing is, how do you respond when you get that conviction? And I, now David, he doesn't... I love David. And I'm going to tell you why. Because in his imperfection, he gives me hope. If you can commit adultery, if you can commit murder and you can still be the apple of God's eye, I got a chance. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> There's still hope. And the thing is this. David realized the conviction on his own. He realized that what he had done, he had done against God and it was wrong. And when he came to that realization, then God took action. When you come to the realization that you're a sinner and that you need God and you want God, then God's going to show up. And just like he did for David, here comes the prophet. Hello. Uh, by the way, David, uh, you, you repented last night, but God told me, yeah, he, he appreciates your repentance, but, but the, the consequence of what you've done, you've got to choose. we got three things for you coming up here, and you're going to have to choose one of them three because you're going to get some punishment, but God is good. He's going to let you choose your punishment, but you're going to get some. 